Pell Robotics from Barcelona. And we have the pleasure to welcome the CEO from uh, Pell Robotics, um, Mr. Francesco Ferro. Um, yes, I'm here. To form you that he received okay. his Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degree in telecommunications from the Polytechnic in 2002, the Master of ISM in Lille, France, and also an executive MBA at the University of Barcelona in 2011. Since 2004, he, he works on, on cutting edge service robots at Japan Robotics. Um, Francesco, if you are connected and you want to begin, please. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. <laughs> Okay, Thanks. thank, thank you, you very much. I give you all the control. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that you're already seeing the slides, correct? Yeah, yeah, we can see them here. In, you in can hear me fine. It's online, I think. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you very much to give uh, me the opportunity to introduce a little bit our company and uh, to make this presentation about the practical challenges that we have now facing front in power robotics, okay? So I will describe a little bit of the company for sure, uh, in order to, to let you know also the, the, the new improvement and the new things that we are doing. Then I will explain also some advances, especially for the healthcare in the collaborative projects. And then I will just give you some hints about the challenges that we are taking care of nowadays, okay? So just speaking about parabotics, see, like uh, the presenter said to me that uh, you already know probably, we were founded in 2004, I'm one of the co-founder and uh, the only one that is still in the company. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, more or less eight employees right now and we are selling robots everywhere. We are the best, it's like uh, the, the normal blah, blah, blah of the marketing company. So probably you know better than me. And, um, but the, the reality is that we are doing uh, a lot of research and during this year we did a lot of platform and here you can see in just one one images all the development that we did imagine that the first four that you can see in gray on this on the left are in the science museum of london uh, in a in the museum uh, like uh, robots history european history uh, i have to mention also that we make part of different association in robotics that help us to make uh, developments in different fields at the same time. There are not only on robotics, but you can see also on 5G, PPP. And so we are trying to push with the different experts that we are in the company on the different fields. But how? Our vertical are four. So from one side, what is more interesting probably for the healthcare part is the social robotics and also the mobile manipulator. Okay, but we are also doing a lot of effort in intralogistic and then you will see some of the example that I, I will just mention to you. About these four vertical, uh, I have to mention that the social robotics probably is one of the most difficult one at the moment in order to make a proper certification because probably like uh, all of you already knows that uh, you can certify application and not hardware so the big mistake in the common sense is that you have to have a robot certified no what we certify is the use case so the software and the application that the robot is able to do then for sure the, the hardware has to respect certain uh, uh, law in, in, gen, in, um, in particular the machine directive, but uh, but this depends on the different sector. For example, in the research, this is something that is very difficult because from one side uh, the application can change every day. Let me say in this way. No, so the research we have not to stop the research, and so from this reason, also like Diego already presented. The humanoids is a little bit difficult to make this kind of certification because we not yet focus only on one application where the robot has to just accomplish on this application. And, uh, and about the mobile manipulator is also something that depending on the environment could be one thing or the other. And uh, opposite way of the common sense, what is in the industry from certification point of view from our understanding is probably 10 times easier than the real environment, home environment or healthcare, for example. And so this is something that we have to take into account. But now just 
go to the collaborative project that I said to you that we are we are taking care. You can see that we are also make part of the Eurobench, and uh, that is from R and D research in order to do this benchmarking and all this kind of, of new certification that we would like to have, so regulation. And uh, we have a, a strong uh, impact on the healthcare part because we are pushing a lot on the healthcare and we have several projects, not only uh, European project, but also national project. But uh, entering some details of, the, of some of them. For example, one is the spring project, uh, just uh, from uh, Monday, we have an integration week here in Parobotis where we have uh, uh, 15 experts that I made the integration in the Harry robots uh, about social skills. What it means? We have thermal camera. We also integrate in the robot some gel dispenser, and uh, we we have to 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 have a robot that could be a receptionist in an hospital in order to help nursery. Uh, and the robot could be also teleoperated, but the main important goal from regulation point of view is especially the navigation in crowded environment. And we will see an example uh, later on. But this is one project that is still ongoing. It will finish at the end of next year, and we are doing a lot of real testing, uh, especially in the hospital of Paris, uh, where um, where the robot is there in a living lab that is called the Broca Live, and uh, it's also making some real demo, and uh, it was very useful also during the COVID period. Another project that is is similar to the previous one with some differences. Is, is about the SHAPES project. It's a very big consortium with a lot of partners. And our idea is, is to have the area also in a residence with elderly people. And so the robot will not have only the temperature detection and the sanitizer, like I said before, but also will detect the, the and monitoring the falls of the elderly, for example, or uh, making also some entertainment games through the, the, the touch screen, but also using the interaction with the arms or with the, with the head and making some uh, physical exercises with, with the elderly. And uh, what we did during the COVID is also adapt this kind of games in order to have the robot uh, compliant with the COVID regulation. <laughs> so there's not only the safety regulation, but sometimes also COVID regulation that change in that period uh, week after week. Um, then we have a, a PhD that is a fully working human-centered approach with the robots. We are using uh, Tiago mainly, but it's also something that we, we are planning to do with the, um, with the ARI robot. And so the idea is, uh, is to, to learn from the human action so in order to mapping this action on the robots. And so the idea is to personalize this kind of robots in order to be more and more useful for the, in this case, for example, for the elderly, elderly people. And um, another, another project that we had uh, more specific in uh, uh, Digital Innovation Hub Hero. So it was about with the Tiago base. And so uh, the idea is to, to enhance the navigation in order to provide services. You can see here real images that we did in the hospital of Badalona here in Barcelona, but we did also in the hospital clinic. And, uh, and uh, we, we just uh, integrate a new sensor in order to deliver things. And uh, with the conveyor, we also be able during the COVID period to, to give food to, to people that had COVID. So in this way, uh, that at that moment, it was a, a very needs and a lack of people in order to assist all the all the all the person in the hospital we were able to help with some solution with this solution uh, the the nursery that were in the hospital so so this is something that that is important but from regulation point of view then there's the navigation in crowded environment and all the other application that uh, that were difficult to to, to certify that is in this sense it's not impossible but it's difficult and now just give a one example, another example that is we call the Mr. Clean. So it's a, it's a project that we did with the Evila project that it was in Spain, the, the, the most well-known company that produced the UVC in order to make this infection. And the idea of this project is to uh, autonomously 
uh, disinfect and sanitize in uh, environment. So in this case, you can see that uh, there are uh, offices, um, uh, center, but also hotels uh, for the pandemic and post pandemic times. So the idea is to, to try to, to clean the, um, from the COVID virus the different environments. And this is very difficult because for certification point of view is something that it was very difficult and we are still in development for the, for the, uh, for the regulation in order to certify it uh, properly because uh, the UVC especially are, um, are not good for persons. So the robot has to work when, where, when there are no person in the environment. So the risk assessment that, uh, that uh, the, the colleague, previous colleague just, uh, just explained much, uh, the, the, um, it's, it's very difficult to, to, to have this. And so uh, the, the problem here is about the liability of this solution in order who take care about this kind of liability. So, so human in the loop is one of the solutions in order to make a proper certification. So the goal in this case, for example, was to have the, the safety, but with a, with a platform that is able to adapt to the different changes that, uh, that are, and that's especially uh, a very good reputability and accuracy. And so this is important in order to have a product on the market. And uh, for sure about the, the different scenario where you can use this kind of solution, you can, uh, yeah, you can imagine a different scenario, but here is where we tested it, the platform. And, uh, but the, the big problem from certification point of view was exactly to certify in some way. And so the, the, the operator that had to, to to remotely control this platform as the liability to uh, check that no person is in the environment in order to allow the robot to, to work properly in the environment without damaging any person in between. Uh, here you can see a list of the relevant norms that we, we observe in order to, to make this, this application ongoing. And uh, it's not only the C marking that at the end of the day, you can use a lot of company in order to make this certification, but uh, still remain an auto certification of conformity. So the, the person in charge, so the technical expert has to certify that, that uh, the, the platform that you are using, uh, especially with, for the application uh, is, is, is taking care about the C marking. And, uh, and here you have uh, the different the different norms. Uh, the electro electromagnetic compatibility is just some test that you have to do, and sometimes uh, you have to repeat it several times because, yeah, uh, depending on the the sensor that you are integrating and also where you are putting the sensor, could um, is very sensitive in order to pass this kind of test. So these are from my point of view, so I'm not the expert in the company of the, the certification, but, but these are the, the most difficult part that allow, oblige you to repeat this test more and more times and also to check any time that you are changing sensors and, uh, and uh, this could be very cost effective. Another point that we are taking care, for example, now with the ARI ARI robot is about the, the, the ISO 13 uh, sorry. That is about to reduce the pitching point of the robots. So this is something that uh, it looks like nice, uh, but then in the reality, you have to respect this kind of regulation in order to, to, to have nobody that can, uh, using the robot, it can be stuck with the finger inside of the movement of the robots. And so you can uh, for sure uh, limit this in the risk assessment with some, uh, some kind of sensor or whatever, but, but uh, at the end also there's the design part, the robot has to be able to satisfy this kind of norms. And uh, as much as you can comply, comply with, with, this, with this norm is better for the, for the, um, for the rest of the, of the application that you have to certify. Uh, finally, the last things that I, I, I also said to you that I will show is, is the example that, for example, we are doing with the, the intralogistics business units. Uh, 
that is uh, having a robot that is able to navigate uh, in a crowded environment. So here you can see the different norms that we have to respect in order to do this disable uh, for the um, um, service robotics. The most important one probably is the 13482. Uh, Okay, that is from uh, 2014, but it's still changing this, this norm. We are in contact with, uh, with he, who is doing the norm. And, uh, and here you can see uh, a small report about what has to be done in order to make the evaluation report, in order to satisfy all the norms. Here you can see it's not only on batteries, but also it takes into account the speed of the robot, for example, I listen a lot of, of time clients that they said to us, I ah, know, but your robot is going very slow. Why this? It's because there's a, a regulation behind that has to accomplish in order to be to have the robots uh, safe for, uh, for the service robotics. And then there's a, a technical file that has to be emitted. And there's th these are the steps that at the moment we are using in order to follow this kind of standard. And usually is it's a, it's a huge <laughs> uh, uh, bureaucratic stuff, but it's very important in order to have not only the risk assessment, but also the, all the reports of the, of the test that you did with the robots and uh, from an electronic but auto mechanical point of view in order to, to make this robot safe for the people. And about the crowded environment, uh, the most difficult part, for example, for the stockbot, that is our inventory robots that we are now deploying in more than 12 uh, countries, different countries all around the world uh, with Decathlon, for example, but we are working also with other retailers uh, even bigger, uh, is that uh, as to share the space with the employees. With employees, it means that are not only customers, but also people that are trained. So, so the customers probably sometimes is even worse especially, let me say in this way, the children, because uh, when you see an autonomous robot that is moving around, they try to stack the robot, they try to kick it. I've seen, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if I can show, but, but there are a lot of video that, uh, that, 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 uh, that I've seen where, the, where the children uh, and also some people just uh, try to, to kick the robot and try to, to, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, but this is from social point of view. So, so around from the regulation. And um, but uh, but the different customers is different from the employees. But there's uh, different challenges from the navigation. So the the fact that the robot has to be localized all the time, uh, has to don't go downstairs, for example. So there's floor, especially for the wheeled robot, and uh, and these are challenges that uh, that uh, you have to take into account for certify the product. And um, and for example. The, the application is something that has to be certified. So the risk assessment and also the C-marking has to be just in, uh, in direction to certify the application. And so, so here there's one in the ISO that address this, these issues, but, but uh, it's still something that even with the certification company that we are using is still uh, sometimes in deba debate because there's no clear standard at the moment. And uh, I think that this is my last slide. And uh, you have seen several several issues. I, I personally tried to don't use the, the biped human robots because I was wondering that, uh, that you already following the Diego presentation. So you already know uh, most of the big challenge on that. But uh, but the, the idea is we would like to have more and more robots that interact interact with humans, serve, serve the humans' needs, and uh, it's not something that to have a, a robot in a cage, in order to, like in the industrial robots. So we would like to have robots that, uh, that are safe for us and can, for example, recognize emotion, but could be a teleoperated and, uh, and could work with people, detecting the people and help us in, uh, in the future. So this is, in our opinion, the most important part in order to improve our quality of life. So now I'm finished with the presentation. So if you have any question, please let me know. No, no, we don't have anything online. Thanks a lot. For... And one question here.
Francesco. Sì. Si. Uh, um, my question is, uh, any of your robots uh, to, to, to be considered as a medical device or, or they are all uh, assistive, uh, I don't know, uh, personal care and so on? Uh, at, the, at the moment, uh, we have not made the certification like a uh, medical device. So we are trying to do some tests and some pilot with some partner with the Thiago robots in some uh, helping assistant, but it is, uh, is not exactly a medical device. So, so it's, it's in between. So, but that is not a medical device. The certification uh, from our understanding, uh, what is doing, for example, the cyber uh, surgery is something that is very huge to do. So, so at the moment we don't want to enter in this sector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. On top of one more question? Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Hi, Francesco, I've got a question about your UV cleaning application. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you gave a great description of the, of the problem, the idea, and the safety aspects around the robot. Absolutely. But I've seen descriptions, but what I'm missing is the efficacy of the cleaning part. Do you know any work, or have you done work on does this actually disinfect the room? Because this is not a normal procedure to clean up any of these spaces. Mm, yes, I, I have to. to... To be transparent on that, so for this reason we are doing uh, this project uh, with uh, Evila Project. So it's another company that is uh, exactly the the, the, the company that uh, already certify all these solutions. So we are not taking care about the UVC uh, certification because it was already provided. So we take care about the the mobility of this this solution and to certify that there's no people in the environment. So. So about the UVC certification, uh, I don't have a, <laughs> a clear understanding because it's the other part and that is taking care. Very good, thank you. Welcome. Okay, thanks a lot for your presentation, Francesco.